Hello, I'm Chris and I've noticed there's often a lot of confusion around the role of aperture when it comes to imaging galaxies and nebulae, in other words, deep sky astrophotography. And this is totally understandable. The bigger the telescope, the more light it lets in, so it does seem to be that that would be the case. But in reality, a large aperture telescope is way more important for things like observing or high-speed planetary imaging than it is for deep sky imaging. In this video, I'll explain why and what actually matters when it comes to shooting the faint stuff out there, the galaxies and nebulae. So let's start with where aperture really shines, and that's with visual observing and planetary imaging. If you're looking at the moon or the planets like Jupiter or Saturn, the goal is to see as much detail as possible. The planets are small and bright, so resolution is what really counts there, and a big aperture gives you more resolving power. You can literally see finer details if your local sky conditions, what we call seeing, aren't too turbulent. For the planets, for planetary imaging, people use something called lucky imaging, which means recording loads of fast frame rates and then stacking just the sharpest ones. A large aperture helps here because it gathers more light quickly and lets you use shorter exposures while still capturing detail. Now with deep sky imaging of galaxies and nebulae, the game changes a bit. These targets are faint and spread out. You're not capturing detail in quick bursts. You're slowly collecting light over many minutes or even hours, taking many long exposures. And here's where people often assume that the bigger telescope will just automatically give you better results. The big limiting factor for deep sky imaging, especially from sea level, is the atmosphere. Because no matter how good your telescope is, the air above you is moving and distorting light. This limits how sharp the image can actually get. It's usually around 1 to 2 arc seconds resolution we can achieve from sea level. And that means even if your scope could resolve finer detail, the sky is blurring it before it hits your camera. Now here's where something called Nyquist sampling comes in. The basic idea is this, if you imagine a sine wave, nice smooth wave like that, you need to sample at quite regular intervals to be able to recreate that. If you only take one or two uh, readings, you'll get a wrong shape entirely if you try and recreate it, and that's called aliasing. So how does this relate to astrophotography? Well, an image can actually be thought of as a wave, specifically a wave of brightness values as you move across each row and pixel. The brightness rises and falls depending on what you're imaging. That's a special sine wave, and to capture that accurately, you, your camera needs to sample at least twice per wave. So, you, in other words, you need two pixels per smallest item you can see, smallest detail. So if your atmosphere is limiting you to say two arc seconds, then your camera should be sampling around one arc second per pixel. That way you're picking up enough detail to represent the image accurately. In short, you need at least two pixels per smallest detail to help avoid aliasing incorrect pixel values. Now back to aperture, it does still matter for deep sky imaging. It's just probably not in a way you might think. Where aperture really helps is in terms of speed. For a given focal length, a bigger aperture gives you a faster focal ratio, and that means you can collect the same amount of data in less time. So more aperture can be very helpful, not for sharper images, but for faster ones. That's why a lot of deep sky images focus more on things like pixel scale, guiding accuracy, and the focal ratio, rather than opting for the biggest mirror or lens they can find. So to sum summarise things, aperture is key for visual and planetary work, where sharp detail and brightness matters. But for deep sky imaging, the required long exposures mean you're limited more by the atmosphere than your telescope. What really counts is matching your pixel scale to your local seeing conditions and building up a, a suitable, well-matched setup. Bigger scopes only really help if your sky conditions can handle them. Okay, so a quick video. Thanks for watching. If that helped, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and a big thank you to my members and patrons. And I'm wishing you all clear skies and hope to catch you all on the next video. Bye for now.